he'll be playing tonight, so I'm not worried about him. How impressed have you been with the way that line has played, particularly on the road trip? They were they were really good, and um, you know, hopefully it can continue. The more they play together, the better the continuity of the line gets, and and the better they feel. Uh, so I mean, uh, we. we like them to be able to play at that level all the time. Kuzmenko was joking that, that the pass he got from Miller in overtime that anybody could score because it was such a great pass. But what about the finish he showed there, Bruce? The fact that he's getting into a zone now where he's much quicker with his releases and not hesitating. Well, yeah. I mean, it's when he shoots. Like, I mean, that's the biggest thing that he has to, to learn to continue to get better. And uh, uh, when there's a guy in front of him, he always wants to make the deke and everything else. But uh, you know, like if you see him and just watch him when he's shooting the puck and there's nobody in front of him, his release is as good as anybody's. And um, you know, and it's uh, it's it's fun to watch because it's very accurate. Bruce, over the course of this six-game stretch with five wins, your power plays outscored the opposition by six, the Pedersen line by seven. What sort of a weapon are they for you right now? The, the what the power play or the, the, the Pedersen, Pedersen line, line having outscored your power play, which has also been very good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's they've been really good. I mean, but you need that if you want to win. If you don't, if you don't get that, and you don't get the the you know the three and four lines going all the time, you're going to find yourself being a very mediocre team. And it's it's simple when teams are going good, it's because everybody on the team is playing well, and that line is it felt it on that trip and. And hopefully they continue to get better. Niels Hoglander uh, working with Miller and Bo. Mm -hmm. What have you liked about that combination since you found it? Well, he brings extra speed, mm -hmm. you know, and he's tenacious. And uh, he's starting to, to learn how to work both ends of the rink a little bit, which has always been a little bit of his problem. And uh, so, I mean, if he continues to do that, I think points and goals will, you know, will follow. And... Uh, uh, he, he's had a little bit of a rough time getting them right now, but it's it's the process of doing the right things, and eventually they all work out. We often think of a puck battle winner who plays with sort of two higher end finishers mm -hmm. as being like a, a Chris Kunitz type, not necessarily a, a five foot nine guy like Nils. But is that sort of what you're looking for in terms of just maximizing how much, how many touches? Well, if you're and, looking for JD the perfect had? line, you know you're yeah, looking yeah. for that. I mean, uh, so I mean. It's uh, it's it's something you can find, but he's he's tenacious on the puck and he's a fast skater. So I mean, those things should work out for him, you know. I mean, uh, or hopefully anyway. Bruce, it looks like Spencer's going to start tonight, and you've been alternating in the last couple of weeks. How tough is that when you've got a guy like Thatcher probably needs to work his game back into where he wants? And big picture, it is the long-term starter for this organization. Yeah, well, I mean, but the whole the whole idea is is not to all of a sudden he plays a couple good games, and then give him eight in a row, you know. Like I mean, uh, Spencer's been really good, and but you want to bring bring it up a little slower for Thatcher, and then you know the next time he might start two in a row, and then you know, and then it'll it'll gradually get back to where he's the he's the guy if he continues to play the way he's he's been playing, but you can't deny that Spencer's been great every time we touch wood that uh, we put him out there. I mean, uh, I don't know what his, his overall record is, but I think it's like one loss in 14 or 15 games. So uh, you can't just sit there and say, because Demers our number one guy and our future that we're going to you know, forget about forget about the guy that's gotten us into a pretty good position right now. Are you seeing enough signs, Bruce, right now to believe that this hockey team turn it around now and enter on the right, uh, right footing? Well, I mean, you know, I look at the, the NHL as a whole, and it's been so topsy-turvy where teams are winning six, losing six. Uh, uh, we'd like to be consistently good, and I thought the way we played in Vegas and uh, and in Colorado, if we can continue to play like that, we're going to get more our sh more shares of the wins than losses. And uh, they've been playing together, and everything is, is going well. But it's one of those things that you you got to get ready and be ready to do that every night, or the league's too good. Somebody else will come in and, and take your take your job or take your position uh, in the standings. You guys sent Bud Coles and then Rathbone down yesterday. Mm -hmm. Looking at Abbotsford's schedule, makes sense maybe to get them some games. Is that your mindset, and do you think they need that? Young guys need to play. I mean, that's the biggest thing. I mean, we love both of those guys, but I mean, right now, when we're playing fairly well, and, you know, I mean, it's no good for a, a Pods or, uh, or Rathbone to, to sit in the stands. We'd much prefer them to play. I mean, I 
was, you know, being a minor league coach for a lot of years, understood, especially in Washington, when um, we had really good young players, they had to play and they developed to the point where they became the, the Capitals for 15 years. And uh, that's what we're looking at. We're, you know, I mean, Pods is going to be an NHL player for a long time and he's going to be back and so is, so is Jack. But I mean, if, if we've got enough guys and they're not playing, let's get them some ice time and, and get their confidence back up. Uh, Pods' confidence was probably at a little bit of a low, low ebb there. And so, I mean, I think going down there and playing all situations, I think will really help him. Alex is one goal away from tying Wayne oh, for no. the, I know. <laughs> I, 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 I see you from tying him from the uh, uh, most road goals. What, what goes into you know performing on the road versus performing at home? Yeah, you, you coached him. Well, I, yeah, with a guy like Alex, it makes no difference. I mean, he loves the the fans and everything, but he comes to play every night. So I mean, um, scoring. Uh, scoring goals is what he does, and it's just uh, uh, you could play on the moon, and Alex would give it his best, and he <laughs> and he and he'd do well. So I mean, um, I, it's it's not surprising that he's that this is another record or milestone that he's going to achieve. I just hope he does it in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he catches Gretzky? Do you think he's going to stay around long enough? And is he one of the, he's obviously one of the greatest. Do you think he's the greatest pure goal scorer we've seen in this league? Well, I think as you know, I'm a real big Alex fan, and. Uh, um, and I think he's going to do it because he's just strong-willed enough to stay around to do it. And I mean, he's going to get 30 plus again this year. So I mean, and uh, he just if he can stay healthy, and luckily he's you know been healthy for most of his career, uh, I would think he would do it. Luke Shen says, you know what's coming, and it comes and it goes in. Like, how does that happen? What is what is it what that makes him do, be able to do that? Because like the guy says, they know what's coming. It's, he's a special, special athlete. I mean, um, you know that if you make a mistake, he's going to put it in. You go to baseball, you know, you know if you make a mistake on judge, it's going out of the park. Uh, you know, if uh, it, in football, if you made a mistake, uh, Brady's going to hit you for a touchdown. And it's the same here. Like everybody for 17 years knows where Alex is on the power play, knows what's going to happen, and he's still you can. And we all do everything we can to try to stop him, but I mean, he still finds a way to get it in. He's so smart offensively that people don't realize how smart he is. Bruce, you've, over the course of your two seasons here, had a sort of bottom six line, whether it was the Lamico, Mott, Highmore group, or now with Amon and Joshua, uh, where you tend to put them into pretty tough matchups and sort of create a different environment for your your classic top six. How do you view the role and what you're looking for from the Amon line at the moment, and but in comparison to how you used Lamico last season? Well, in, in, in a perfect world, I mean, first of all, I have confidence in all of those guys, and they've been playing great. There's no doubt. Um, you'd like to be able to start them in your own D zone, so you don't have to uh, waste a Bo Horvat or Petey in your D zone, and and. If, if they could ever get to the point where they can play, you know, at least a third of the time or two thirds of the time against the other team's top line, that frees your offensive lines up against the other team's probably third or fourth line, which would make it great. But I mean, I've always been a big believer uh, ever since I got in this league that uh, if you have four good lines, and you have a great chance of, of winning the majority of your games. And I still believe that. And you look back at all the cup winners in the last 15 years, that the, their fourth line has been a real big part of the team. And very few times has it just been a one-line team or a two-line team that wins the cup. 